Hello and welcome everybody. Now that Everspace 2 is around for a few weeks and is embarrassing recent AAA launches in terms of quality, playtime and as an overall nicely crafted video game that is not charging you 70 bucks, I would like to take a deeper look at the available endgame and share my thoughts with you. We all know that Rockfish Games was in the end hard pushed to finally release their game and had to cut some features in order to stay on track, namely more exterior transmog options or the cockpit customization feature. This summer we will get a free content DLC that should address a few issues and hopefully add more endgame opportunities. Right now we are hitting kind of a wall once the story is completed. Sure, we can farm the legendaries, complete the location challenges and roam the beautiful world, or rather space in this case. But not unlike other games, the endgame experience is rather bare bones. Rifts are a one trick pony that force you to emphasizing damage output and leave not enough room for varied builds. Outriders had a similar problem with its wave-like endgame mode that is structured a lot like the Everspace 2 rifts. Now from my perspective Everspace lacks two essential ingredients for a more engaging endgame. But I also think that these additional layers could be implemented easily, speaking of course from a non-developer perspective. Both layers would work hand in hand to provide an engaging endgame loop that would incentivize you to dust off your spaceship and tinker around with some builds. First we need some additional progression layers that are worth investing in without breaking the game balance. The two features I would like to see here are equipment optimization and character mastery. On the equipment side of things, we are faced with a very static RNG dependent situation. You hunt for superior Starforged and the 18 legendary items with partly randomized stats. The Division 2 had a very similar problem at the beginning and did a great job of addressing these issues. The optimization station later enabled you to increase slowly and very expensive the attached stats of your favorite items. And you could interchange one of the three stat slots. This was linked to a skill library where you first had to gather the stats that you could then put on your gear. And you can only change one of the three slots. This mixes up the hunt for the perfect item with the power to change things to your liking, to a degree and adds another collection endgame loop at the same time. It is not that Everspace needs to re-event the wheel here, I think you could implement basically the same system to this game. Same goes for the character progression, like a mastery level system. Diablo 3 or again The Division 2 added these mechanics where you further gain experience and slowly accumulate mastery points that you can invest into very minor stat improvements. These would be the attributes in Everspace 2 like precision, utility and so on. We all like a little carrot on a stick in front of us to have some feeling of further progression. And it would not hurt the overall balance if you hand out say 5 attribute points per mastery level that you can then spend accordingly. To sum this section up, these two progression layers would give you a basic work for a long term goal motivation. One on the collect slash item side and one based on a very slow minor character improvement. The second part aims at the offered endgame activities. We have nine classes and a plethora of build opportunities, but just doing rifts over and over with increasing difficulty doesn't really encourage you to come up with cool builds, you just want to maximize survivability and damage output. We need activities that allow for more diverse approaches and ship setups. We also have all these beautiful locations available that, for the most part, you will never visit again. Part of the solution is already in the game, when G and B elite squads, redeemers, ancients and so on suddenly invade you. I'm always eager for this to happen. Unfortunately, they don't really pose a threat even on nightmare difficulty. What if these invasions would be extended? 
to include destroyers, Oka corvettes and so on. You could build up a threat level by killing related enemies to force such an invasion for example and then face two or three capital ships with some fighter squads. You could even take this one step further and have rotating invasions of systems on the map and then work through stages to repel the invasion. A little like the motherland structured quests in Ghost Recon Breakpoint, where you could do three to four weakening missions to cripple the enemy before tackling the main objective. Imagine taking down some generators or activating local defenses or establishing a warp beacon for friendly forces before entering the final battle stage. These varied stages would also allow the player to use a wider range of builds because you don't have just this one scenario where you fight against everything at once alone. A second opportunity to broaden the endgame would be a combination of a progression layer and a specialized task. Imagine owning a run-down freighter with barebone shields, armor and so on and receiving lucrative but dangerous transport missions. Remember the escort missions from Freelancer that were really well implemented? You and your fighter would just join formation with a click and then the whole squad automatically entered the travel state where you could face interruptions from enemies, are forced out of space travel, left the formation with another click to fight off the enemies and then rejoin to return to travel mode. What if you could pick up dangerous transport tasks and face a similar procedure, either by being forced out of cruise drive into randomized areas a la freelancer or small invasions at the pickup and delivery points. Combine this with the ability to slowly upgrade your freighter, better shields, armor, installing turrets, hiring additional wingmans and so on. This would create another activity with its very own progression layer, a combination of the underground activity from the first division game and the freelancer escort feature. Now to reward these two endgame activities, fighting back invasions and taking on risky transport tasks, you could receive materials and experience for the before mentioned progression layers, optimizing gear and mastery levels. And owning a freighter that you could pimp out is another long term progression layer in itself. This is where these features would go full circle and work towards each other. Earning materials for some improvements and to gain more control over your gear and putting your improvements to the test in various tasks that are entertaining but also allowing for far more build variety and approaches than we have right now. What are your thoughts on this matter and what kind of endgame would you like to see? I am looking forward to your suggestions in the comments. And if you help blowing up this video, we can turn this into a customer wishlist or petition for the developers. Maybe they can squeeze in one or two things into their next content DLC. Anyway. This is all for now about Everspace 2. Take good care of yourself and fly safe.